Hello, good morning. Um, welcome to lesson 13. Okay, so uh, in our previous lesson, in uh, lesson 12, I've asked you guys to do uh, exercise 4.1, question number 5 and question number 9. Okay, let's look at the answer together. Right, okay, please use a red pen to take the answer. Okay, so question number 5. Uh, the answer for A is 400 meters square. Okay. Okay. So remember, uh, for the ratio one to two thousand, if they did not write any unit, it's in centimeter. Okay. So the first step is uh, to change the two thousand centimeter to meter because the question require uh, meter square. So before we find the ratio of the area, we need to find. Um, the uh, the actual the actual area we represented as a I mean re actual actual length okay two thousand centimeter change it to twenty meter and then we find the ratio area by square both side okay and then we uh, get the answer for one centimeter square which represented by four hundred meter square right that is your actual area as for part B you can use part A answer. Uh, one centimeter square represented by four hundred meter square, and change it, uh, and cross multiply with a five centimeter square. Okay, and then there you go. You get a two thousand meter square. Okay, so remember, if your map area, uh, the unit is in centimeter square, both must be the same. And as for actual area, if uh, four hundred meter square, the other one must be also meter square, right? Okay. Then let's proceed to question number 9. Question number 9, the answer for part A is 1 to 40,000. I hope you remember, kilometer change to centimeter is times 1,000 and times 100, which is 100,000, right? Okay, so part B, uh, since you are looking for the area on map, the question say area on the map, so you need to uh, find the ratio of the area by square both sides. Okay. I'm using the original one, 3 cm to 1.2 km. Okay, I square both sides and then I cross multiply. Okay, 0 0.32 is under actual area. Then you cross multiply and your answer for the area on the map is 2 cm square. Set to 4.2. Okay, in page 197 until 104. Okay, it's about direct variation. Okay, today we are going to cover try it three on page one hundred. Okay, uh, try it three and also exercise four point two. Exercise four point two here. Question number one, two, and three. Okay, this is the questions that we are going to cover today. Oh, and also question number seven, which I will ask you to do as homework. Okay, okay. So this uh, subtopic four point two is about direct variation. Actually, in our uh, in real life, or actually, we already know what is direct variation. It's just that the name scares you, right? Okay, uh, what is direct variation? Okay, I can give make you understand by. I give you an example. Okay. Okay, let's say you're going to the canteen, right? You are going to buy a pack of Milo. The pack of Milo is 80 cent. Okay, the stall, the second stall is actually selling 80 cent per box. Okay, per box. So one quantity, the quantity of one box, okay, one uh, box is actually 80 cent. Okay, this is the price of the Milo per box. Okay, uh, one box is 80 cent and for this is the number of box of the Milo is one and is 80 cent. So if we buy two, okay, so if we buy two, the price of the Milo definitely will be increased, right? You times two, so it's one dollar and 60 cent. Okay, so two boxes of Milo is $1.60 so if you buy three let's say you're buying three okay you, you want you want to drink more so three the price of three Milo is two dollar and forty cent 
so the price increasing so this is actually a direct variation because the, if the number of uh, Milo boxes increases the price of the Milo is also increasing All right so the more the more Milo you buy the price of the Milo will it will be increasing so this is what we call direct variation okay so when uh, when the number of box increase, the price of the Milo is also increasing. We call it a direct variation or, or direct proportion. Okay, and then uh, one more thing I want you to know is that when the price increasing and the uh, and the I mean the number of boxes increasing, the price of the Milo increasing, we actually can find a constant. There is a constant here. What is constant? Okay, so eighty cent. The price of the Milo if we divide by the number of box we will get 80 0 0.80 and 1.60 from here when we divide it by 2 we will get 0 0.80 and this part here 2.40 divided by 3 we will get 0 0.80 okay this is what we call constant so the constant here is 0 0.80 so when we say that uh, it's a direct proportion or direct variation okay it will definitely have a constant okay i'll show you the definition here okay. when two quantities x and y vary in such a way that y divided by x is a constant so if we have two quantities x and y okay the quantities in this example that i gave you is the number of box number of mylar box and the price of the mylar okay if these two vary in such a way that y divided by x is constant okay so we have uh, x as a number of box and the y as the price of the milo so if we divide y divided by the x so if we divide and we get the same thing which we call it as constant okay which we call it as constant is a constant here they are said to be in direct variation okay or y or we can say that y is directly proportional to x okay it's directly proportional to x so in this case in this milo case here we can say that the price of the milo the price of the milo is directly proportion to the number of Milo box or Milo pack okay so we can say that the price of the Milo is directly proportion to the number of Milo of pack or we say Y is directly proportion to X okay that is what this meant right okay so this one you can copy into your notebook Okay, in, remember there is there was always a constant. Okay, let's go to try it three. Okay, try it three page uh, page one hundred. Okay. All right. The following table shows the number of hours work and the corresponding wages of a worker. Okay. So, of course, you can see that the number of hours uh, the worker work. Okay. Let's say you are a worker. Okay. You are working a number of hours. Okay. The more hours you work the more wages you will receive, uh, the more salary that you will receive. Okay, the more salary, the more money you will get. Okay, the more number of hours you work, the more money you will get. Okay, and this one we call a, is uh, we call it as a direct variation. Okay, so how part A, how do we actually show that T and W are in direct variation? How do we show that it's a direct variation? Okay, as I said just now, there must always be a constant. So if we find the constant and the constant uh, actually constant all the numbers will be the same okay if we find that it's a constant then we already show that they are in a uh, direct variation okay so part a to do part a okay okay so to do part a okay we find W divided by T. Okay, W divided by T. Okay, W divided by T for this part here is 150 divided by 10. Okay, 
okay and we get 15 right okay and if we find here it will be 300 divided by 20 and it will give you 15 right and here 450 if we divide it by 30 we also get 15 okay and here 600 we divided by 40 we also will get 15 and the last one if it's also 15 then we can say that this is a direct variation 750 you divided by 50 is also 15 so this in this table here if we find everything here divided w divided by t if we find a constant all of this also 15 right okay so the const we can say that the constant is 15 so we have shown that they are direct variation okay since the constant is 15 okay we can say that w is direct proportion no to t with a constant of 15 okay so this is the answer uh, the constant is 15 we have to find one by one so if the constant is the same it's the same 15 15 15 so we can say that w is direct proportional to t this is how we show that it's a direct variation okay okay part b draw the graph of w against t okay so last week i asked you to uh, prepare graph paper Okay, so this is the graph paper. This is the graph paper, and I'm going to show you how do we do uh, draw the graph of W against T. Okay, hold on. Now. Okay, so this is the graph paper. Okay, you are going to show that uh, show to show the graph. So draw the graph of W against T. W against T. Your W will be your y-axis. Your W. This is your W against T. T is your x-axis. Okay. So now we are going to draw this out and look at the scale. They did not give you any scale, so you can use uh, any scales as long as it's the same uh, unit uh, so let this be uh, for x axis let it be 2 cm to 10 unit so 10 20 30 40 and 50 for this okay and for the y axis uh, let it be 100 each cm 100 200 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Okay. So now let's plot. Okay, let's plot it. So 10 hours is $150. 10 hours is $150. 20 hours is $300. And 30 is $450. And 40 is 600 and 50 is 750 okay you can follow your own pace to draw this graph you can pause the video and uh, draw your graph first then you can uh, continue again looking at the graph and compare with my graph okay so after you plot all this let's say you already finished plotting so you draw a line a straight line Connecting all the points. Okay, okay. So this will be your graph. Okay, it's definitely touching zero. Okay, why is it touching zero? Zero. It must touch at zero because, uh, for ex uh, like the example that I gave you just now, the one mile or one pack of mile equals to eighty cent, right? So if zero, you don't buy any Milo, the price will definitely be zero because you're not paying for anything. Okay, it, it won't make any sense if you have 
uh, if you don't buy any Milo and you have to pay an amount of money, uh, one dollar let's say, no, it's impossible, right? So uh, direct migration is always starting from zero. Okay, starting from zero. Okay, so we have done part B, the graph of W against T. So we can continue question uh, C. Find the equation connecting T and W. Okay. Okay. One more thing I want you to know is that. Okay, from the textbook here. Okay, y over x is a constant, correct? Okay. The next thing I want you to know is here. When two quantities x and y are in direct variation, okay, you have x and y in direct variation. Y is equals to k. You look at this. This y is equals to kx. Or we can say, okay, this y equals to kx is come. It, it comes from here. Y over x is equals to the constant. Okay, y divided by x is equals to the constant k. Okay, so when you actually move the x to the other side, it's y equals to k times x. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, y equals to kx is the same as uh, y over x equals to k. Okay, so the graph, the second point here, the graph of y equals to kx is a straight line passing through the origin. Okay, like I draw just now for you to see already, the straight line is actually passing through the origin. Okay, so if I were to uh, form an equation, okay, given the uh, example that I gave you just now about the Milo again, right, again Milo. How do we find, how do we actually find uh, the equation? Okay, so I wrote just now x is number of box or number of pack, huh? it's the same. So and the y is the price of the Milo, okay? Y is directly proportioned to x. So we can say that y is actually equals to k times x, okay? Or y divided by x is equals to k. That's what we did just now, right? y divided by x, y divided by x, y divided by x equals to 0 0.80, correct? So y divided by x is 0 0.80 so in this case in this Milo case we can say that y is equal to 0 0.80x okay this is the equation okay this is the equation that connecting the price of the Milo and the number of the Milo pack okay so this one also okay you copy it down y equals to kx Okay, where k is a constant. Okay, these two is the same. You can copy this or this one is the same thing. Okay, and y equals kx is a straight line passing through the origin. So, in this question, okay, we found the con constant just now, right? So, w divided by t is the constant which is 15. So, we can say that 15 is equals, uh, w is equals to 15 t. Okay, so this is the answer. Find the equation connecting T and W. So this is the equation already, which is connecting T and W. Okay. So part D. If the worker worked 35 hours, find his wages. Okay, we know the W represented as wages. Okay, this one represented as wages. And T is represented as the number of hours that you work. If the worker worked 35 hours, so if you work 35 hours, so you can just sum in, you 35 hours, find the wages. So since W is equal to 15T, so 15 you can straight away times with 35. Okay, because your T now is 35. So you times this and you will get 525, $525. Okay, so this is the answer. We can just use the equation that we find just now to get the answer. Okay, part E. If the wages of a worker were 675, so now our W is 675. Find the number of hours he worked. So your W now is 675. Since W is equal to 15T, so W is 675 equals to 15T. So we can find our T here. We move the 15 to the other side, become divide. So 675 divided by 15 is equals to 45. So T is equals to 45 hours. Okay.
okay so to get that $675 you need to work for 45 hours okay so that's all for try 3 so now we proceed let's proceed to exercise 4.2 exercise 4.2 is in page 105 okay uh, copy all these down including try it 3 exercise 4.2 question number one number two and number three okay you copy that down okay let's do question number one oh. oops okay you need to copy everything down into your notebook all right okay so question one determine whether x and y are in direct variation okay so we need to find out whether this is in direct variation to find that out we need to find the constant okay you need to find the constant if the constant we have the same constant for everything if we have the same constant that we can say that it's a direct variation okay let's find out the constant for part question number uh, 1a okay number 1a uh, so we divide y divided by x so part a the constant is okay we will find y divided by x so y divided by x in this case is 3 divided by 1 which is 3 okay and for part uh, for the second part here we have y divided by x which is 6 divided by 2 and is equal to 3 okay 6 divided by 2 3 divided by 1 and 9 divided by 3 is equals to 3 also and how about 12 divided by 4 it's also 3 so we can say that uh, yes okay y is directly proportional to x okay yes it is directly proportional to x and the working is here the constant okay the constant that we find just now is 3 3 all 3 okay we can actually form an equation here okay which is y equals to your constant is 3 so it's 3x because our y over x is 3 so y is equal to 3x okay that is our equation connecting x and y okay how about part b let's find out if y over x is a constant 10 divided by 2 okay is a 5 and 20 divided by 4 is 5 yes correct but 25 when we divided by 6 what do we get is it a 5 it's not a 5 right it's a 4 1 over 6 okay so it's very obvious that this is not a direct proportional because it's not all 5 even though the last one 40 divided by 8 is 5 but since this is not 5 so it's no it's not a direct variation or it's not a directly proportional to each other okay okay part c and part d i'll leave it for you to do it by all okay c and d okay it's the same concept with a b you can do it in c and d okay c d i'll let you do okay question number two determine whether x and y are in direct variation okay like i say this now okay uh your directly propo uh, direct variation graph it it always start from zero okay it always start from zero or it, it always start from origin okay and it will never start from like this part a he okay? is starting from you see this is starting from 10 okay so this one is not okay it's not not direct variation it's not a direct not direct variation it's not direct direct proportion or direct variation okay it's always starting from zero and part b yes it's a straight line and it's also passing through zero yes it's a direct variation okay okay now number three in each of the following equation, determine whether x and y are in direct variation. Remember when I say uh, direct variation, it's always y equals to kx, right? Okay, y equals to kx. So let's look at a. y equals to 4x and your k here is 4, right? 
So yes, it uh, is a, a direct variation. And B, y equals to x plus 2. There is a plus 2 here, so it's not a direct variation. Okay. And C, we have an x squared, so it's no. It's not a direct variation because we have x only, only x, and then with a constant k. Okay, how about d? y equals to half x. So your k here is half. So yes, it's a direct variation. Okay, it must fulfill the y equals to kx. Okay, that's for question number three. Okay, so question next is question number seven. I want you to do it by yourself, uh, which require graph. Okay, so question 7, you do it. So your homework is page uh, for exercise, exercise 4.2. Okay, page 103 to 104. You do question number, you continue with number 1 CD, number 1 C and number 1 D, and question number 7. Okay, only this, yeah? Okay. That's all for lesson 13. I see you again in the next lesson. Okay, thank you. Ta-ta, bye-bye.